Welcome to Tawabu, also known as Mosquito Town. There's mosquitoes been biting me everywhere. I've just got a big bite in the middle of my forehead now. Built on the banks of a river to the north of Lake Manyara in Tanzania, this thriving town is a green oasis in a largely arid region. The town's prime location has made it the most diverse town in arguably the whole of Africa, where over 120 different tribes live peacefully side by side. But this paradise is in danger. Today, I'm venturing into Tawabu to learn Learn more about the people who call this town home and how climate change is wrestling their livelihoods. Our journey starts with a brief stop at this cafe, Mambo, which sells coffee made using local coffee beans. Oh, Asante Sana. It looks nice. Let's try the local coffee. The coffee is earthy and flavorful, mm. and I enjoy it in good company. It's time to move on. Oh, on the roof. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. After our delicious coffee, we meet Haroon. Haroon is from the Tony Cultural Tourism Program, who offer cultural activities throughout Tobabu. He is one of the many people who live here in the village. Our village, we have more than 120 tribes. All the tribes from Tanzania, they come in here because we have a good fertile soil. We have enough water. Also, we have the main road to Gorongoro and Serengeti for selling some crops. All the coming from different parts of Tanzania, mostly. But we have migrated tribes, like the Makonde is from Mozambique. Because uh, our neighbors' countries, they are not cool. There's a civil war in the side of the house. That's why sometimes they're moving to Tanzania. Peaceful, we don't have any trouble. It's easy to, co to cross the border. Because uh, when you arrive to Tanzania, you can live with us for some several years. Then later, you'll be Tanzania. Mostly they coming, not they coming in a, in a good way, they just coming for hiding themselves. And then later they will be Tanzania. Which tribe are you from originally? Mixed between Chaga and Maasai. You identify more with one of the two tribes? Um, I can say Chaga because my father is from Chaga. This is where we cross. We get a lunch inside of the banana plantation. Oh, okay. Jumbo. And this is our kitchen where we prepare our local meals. Okay. Jumbo. Jumbo. <laughs> Asante sana. You're welcome. This is our tradition meal. This is coming from some of the tribes. This, this is chili. It's made by carrot, pepper, and tomato. This is green lentil. There is carrot and uh, onion on it. This is a local vegetable. There is carrot and onion on it. Yellow lentil. It's the same with the green lentil. This is banana. Yes, oh, there yeah. is carrot, onion, and uh, oil. Mm -hmm. This one is a different vegetable on it. It's a wild lady finger, you know this? No, I don't. This is a local vegetable. A also. local vegetable? Yes. This is carrot, there is carrot and uh, onion, and also this is cabbage. Pancakes? That's pancake, yeah. yeah. It's a uh, normal rice. And this is a uh, beef. There is some vegetable on it. Yeah, the tomato in there. Yes, as well. tomato and carrot in it. This is ugali. Ugali, it's oh, a typical yeah. food in Africa. Made with the maize? Maize, yes. Yeah. It's rice, pilau. Okay. The beef? I'll try some of this one. This is some local vegetables, the lentils. So now we're going to try it. Very nice. It's now time for some dessert. Ah, oh, the red bananas here. Yeah. Asante sana. There it is. Nice. I like the red banana. Mm. Mm. The other one. Let's see if I can taste a difference between the two. Yeah, okay. The red one is sweeter. They're still trying to get you. It's a bit on my forehead. Oh no. In the mosquito cream. I can see why it's called Mosquito Town. Because mosquitoes have been biting me everywhere. Mm -hmm. Put the cream on. And of course they try and find where I don't have cream, so I've just got a big bite in the middle of my forehead now. <laughs> It's time to explore Mosquito Town. This is our local traditional house. We put the vertical, the strong trees, and okay. then horizontally the weak ones, and then we put mud between them. They yes. put the firm first, and then later they put mud in the last thing. And does everyone in the village make the houses like this? It doesn't matter what tribe they're from, they all you do the same style. All the use wood, but uh, they are styling of use. Okay. The only one is from Maasai. The one which is square like this one here, mm -hmm. it's from Chaga, okay. Guru, and Makonde. And sometimes they put in iron sheet if you have enough wood money but some they use banana bark they yeah in chaga but say they put in the grass another tribe like uh, sukuma gogo and the way they're putting also coconut leaf during the rain season is not very cold inside during the hot time is not hot inside yeah. it's one of the house which is uh, regulate the climatic yeah. Yeah. yeah so that's a very good house yes and this is our local bridge and that is a uh, piggy tree 
And we have fish on, on, on the river. We have tilapia and catfish. Do you eat the fish? Yes, we do. This is a banana tree. And this is one of the crops which is very helpful in our village. Because in one head of the banana, we're getting like a 70 big bunch of banana like that. Yeah, one. that's a lot of bananas. Yes, and uh, every month we harvest banana. In uh, biologically, we don't have the seeds of banana. We need to uproot this one here, yeah. we go to transplant somewhere else. Okay, yeah, but and that uh, makes another tree. Yeah. As you see behind you, you see the one? Oh yeah, this you one's been cut. That one? The young has grown up. That one will grow the bananas yes. next. This we cut it in middle because nutrition and water from this stem mm -hmm. can be used for the younger one. So, so the bananas, it, it produces the fruit all year round, the trees? Yes, all the year round. You see this one here? Oh yeah, another one. This younger one. Sometimes we need to kill the younger one if it's a lot. Too Thin many, it will be a forest. Yeah. yeah. All the banana, we have 18 varieties of them. That's a and, lot. Uh, we have banana for cooking. This we use it for frying banana. And also, we have fruit banana. This is red banana. Yeah, you can see the red stems on the leaves. Yes, sure. That also is one of the fig trees. That was a very big tree. And it's it been falling down because of the wind, because it was a very old tree. And people, they want to make local canoeing. Ah, so they make canoes with the wood. Yes, because this can float. It's not like ebony and other trees. That's part of the tree. Yeah, it's a part of the tree. You see, it's very light. This is a big tree, <laughs> but it's so light. Oh, wow. Yeah, very light. Let's see if I can lift it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's very light when you compare the size of tree. Yeah, probably light compared to other trees. Yes, akuna <laughs> matat. Subscribe to see more of my attempts to lift heavy objects. This is one of the tree we call it Sodom apple. In our culture, it's one of the lucky flower. When yeah. you're taking flower, you put it in your pocket, we should get lucky on it. The branch of it we use to toothbrush, the roots we use for stomach edge. Get one of these in our pockets then. It's one yeah. of the very useful. Let's get be tree. let's be lucky. Let's be lucky. Ow. <laughs> it's spiky. Not so lucky so far. <laughs> that's how we dry our crops. Okay, you on the blue. The, yes, on the blue there. And what's this one that's drying currently? That's the beans. Mm -hmm. Soya beans. Oh, that's cool. All the plantation which you have, we used to irrigate our farms by water from the river. We used to block water from here, and you open there, and then the water is gone. Oh, and there. then the water goes over into and the crops. And then you irrigate the farms. But sometimes the soil will be not uh, well. Yeah. We don't have enough fertile on it. What are we doing? We used to take manure from the Maasai land. We put it in our farm, we mix it with the soil, mm -hmm. and then it fertilizes yeah. the soil. We don't use any chemical things. That's very good. Okay. But it's our exotic fruits in our village. Yes. You know the fruits? Uh, oh, is that the full size? Yeah. Yeah, there's a size of it. I don't know. What is it? It's called sosa. It's a sweet, a little bit sour. It's one of the fruits where you have more than one wife. It's better to eat because it needs a little bit in it. And did you say this is owned by lots of different families? They all have their own part of it. Yes, yeah. everyone have got the piece of land. In our village, if you want maybe to live with us right now, you can buy land from someone. In Tanzania, the land is owned by government. Anyone can use it. If sometime you have a big land, you don't use it, yeah. government can take it from you okay. and give others. That's yeah. why in Tanzania up to now, everyone have got a piece of land. Yeah. It's not like Kenya and other countries because in Kenya, some elder ones, they already pick your biggest land. The others, local people, they doesn't get it. Babu! No. That is goats. Why you put your goats like this? It's because the Maasai, they believe all cattle belong to them. So they will try and steal them? Yes. When you say they steal, they say no. We pick your things at your home. Wow. Because they believe all cattle belong to them. And that's why during the daytime, we put like this. Mm -hmm. And nighttime, we put it inside of the house. Why are there thorns in here? Do they eat the leaves? They eat leaves of it. Then later, they can remove it. And it will be easier for the local people. They can use it as a firewood. Talking into them. I want to ask you, I have a question Hello. for you. Hello. I hope you will, you will answer me. Oh, what is it? What is this? Ooh. Lemongrass? Yes, okay. Was that right? Yes. 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 This will help us also during the, uh, the virus problem. We had a late vaccine. That's why. You had a late vaccine? Very late. So you used the lemongrass? We used lemongrass because uh, we used respiration. Respiration, oh, okay. So when people were sick, they had the lemongrass. You have lemongrass, you have ginger. Okay, you can. Uh, Yep. Our day with Haroon from the Tony Cultural Tourism Programme was organised by Frank, director of safari tour company Serengeti Clarity. This cultural tour is one of the many activities that he has arranged for us over the next few days. If you'd like to book an experience like mine, click the link down in the video description and pin comment. There, you can request a free, no obligation quote from the same tour companies that I used to organise my trip, including Serengeti Clarity. We arrive at our next destination in the village. 
but it's based on the tomato on it. Oh yeah. What a cool bridge. But I'm gonna concentrate on it. See the bird flying over? Yeah. We are surrounded by rice plantations here. The rice currently is growing and in late October, early November, that's when the rice is ready for harvest. The birds say like the water and they've got the watchmen who have to watch it, especially in harvest time. Make sure the birds don't take the rice in the day and at night the hippos will come and try and take the rice. They have to have someone watching them at all times. Do they plant this by hand or with a machine? By hand. Because it's very, Everything we're very neat. Back. We're putting a, a rope on it. A, a rope right. to get yes. your line. Yes, we're putting a line on it. Oh! Okay, now we got the market, okay. public market. Hello. Hello. And uh, this is where we recycle our tires. Oh, you recycle tires That's and turn them into shoes? That is tire shoes. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. That is tire shoes. We don't use all the car tires. Tuk tuk tires. Oh, yeah. That's that so is tuk tuk tire. Wow. Even motorbike tire we use it. still some Maasai wearing shoes like that and I wondered yes. where they've got them from. Yeah. It's someone making it. It's from Chaga Trap. He's the one who makes it. Oh, wow. wow. They're very good. Yes. Yeah, also, he makes good. some different this is from his, his tire. Yeah. He carried it. He ah, just around, yeah. Do that. Oh, okay. it, ah. and then it's like this. This is all the equipment which he's using for. How many shoes does, does he sell per day? He can sell him maybe three pairs. About three pairs a day. Yeah. But uh, he can make more than that. Or and uh, the man normally say also, he can give you guarantee. He say three years. Three guarantee. years. And, uh, but he can stay maybe more than 12 years. Asante. 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 Oh, yeah. Uh, Asante. So maybe and then after uh -huh. fruit market, 24 bro. Asante, you have a lot of food. You have a lot of food. You see, that's some patients and a different kind of beans. That is sadis. Oh, little it's fish, yeah. Little fish. This is a roll, but normally pregnant women, they used to me eat it because I've got a lot of calcium on it. They eat the rock? Yes. Oh, wow. For increasing calcium on it. So, so much fruit here, isn't there? Yes, it's so much Those fruit. Are little bananas. Yes, little banana. We have big banana. We have some different parts of banana. Mostly. Those are massive. Yes. Are those cooking bananas? That is a cooking banana. Okay. And this is how the local people they put in price on it in a yeah. kilo. You see, this is a price on a kilo. Tanzania shilling. Has oh, everywhere. Ah, the shop? red bananas. Yes, oh, that's the red nice. banana. Oh, and this is the. It's the one which we saw there. Yeah, I yeah. I show you in the tree there. Is it open every day? Every day. From Monday to Sunday. Um, how many from 6 hours? From a.m. to 18 p.m. Mostly they're working here. Yeah. They don't have a plantation. So Mostly. do they buy them from the people on the plantations? Yes. And then sell them here? Yes. And uh, this is the door of the market. They do close it. And at the end of every day, does everyone take their produce home or do they leave it here? They leave it here, but it's covered by shit. There is watchmen. Wow. Watchmen will closing at, at 18 every day. There is two watchmen who are working in that okay, during yeah. night time. And this is our supermarket. Yeah, it's yeah. very good. There's <laughs> lots of produce there. Yes. Yeah. Sure. yeah. They're from school. Yeah. They finish a day. Okay, we arrived to one of the tribes. Asante. Mambo. Yeah. This is one of the tribe we call it Makonde tribe. And uh, everyone of good their stuff we are making. They want a specialist to make <laughs> different stuff. It's very nice. So mm -hmm. he's wrapping them in the yes. in the beads. After covered, he's making decoration on it. Then later you put the beads. Like that, yeah. Karibu. So my friend, my name is Sos Peter. I'm a member of Makonde family. And we Makonde, we are not Tanzania people. We are come from Mozambique. So we Makonde, we are good for the traditional dance mm -hmm. and wooden carving. Here we use a different type of wood to make these carvings here. We use a uh, ebony wood, mahogany wood, rosy wood and teak wood. So teak wood, rosy wood and mahogany we found around this area because they need a lot of water and once you cutting one tree you should plant five to six for the future generation. That is the law. 
and we like it. So my friend, everything you see here we make, they have mm. a certain story behind. Maybe you have seen something like this somewhere, but you don't know the meaning. Many people in one piece. This one in Swahili words we call Ujama. Ujama means socialism. You know, here in Tanzania we have more than 120 different tribes, different religion but we live together. In Tanzania, to intermarriage between tribe and tribe, hakuna matata. So when we come from Mozambique, we take an idea to make this figure, to representing how Tanzania living together. Another thing, these people here, very skinny, mm -hmm. carrying baby, and something on top. This is Mama Makonde, our tribe. We make this because during the civil war, our grandfather and our grandmother, they walk long distance from Mozambique to Tanzania. On the way, there are no food enough, there are no water to drink, they get very skinny like this. Also here we have a lot of masks, but this is special for our tribe Makonde. This is a protection mask. This picture is not painting. This picture is, it on is banana? made from dry banana bark. This is dry banana bark. So to get different colors on our picture, we skin in a part of dry banana bark like this. And then we binding on top of the canvas like this. And the black color we found in outer part. This job we inherited mm. through to our father and the father and the father. Generation to generation. As you can see the man how they make it, no machine. It's handmade and it's very oh, wow. hard work. Yeah. Yeah. Mambo. Mambo poor. Yeah. <laughs> Mambo. <laughs> you can look. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, this is a rosy wood. Oh, the warthog? Yeah. yeah. Pumba. <laughs> That's cute. Pumba, yeah. <laughs> it looks like a machine, but it's yeah. not. It's a, it's a hand by hand, yeah. Yeah, yeah. very nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Zuri Sana. Say yeah, something. <laughs> the rhino. It's time to head to our last stop of the day, Lake Manyara. But when we arrive at the lake, which is renowned for being a thriving ecosystem with a plethora of wildlife living in its banks, it is not what we expect at all. Haroon explains what has happened to this once vibrant forest. Originally, area of the lake, it was very far. Where you see the forest, it was the forest. You see all the trees have been cut, and the government allow people to cut all the dead trees. So why is the water coming further in? It's because of global warming. Heavy rain that is normal. Okay, so you never used to have such heavy rains. Yes. And the lake, it was very far, just like uh, three kilometers from here. Wow, three kilometers away? Yes, it was like that. But now the water was being... Wow. And it had been already decreased, because when you see further far where the dead trees is, to where the lake was. Okay, so in the rainy season, it flooded even more? Yes. Sure. I later learned that the lake is now shrinking because there were no rains this year at all. We make our way down to the water's edge where we are greeted by some local canoes. You can follow me? Okay. These will be our modes of transport for the remainder of our expedition. Okay, so the boats yes. are all together so that we don't go in the mud. It's a walkway of boats. Oh, that's Santi. Malabi thought? Yes, Malabi Yeah. And that's an egret? Yes. So do you see animals here? Yes, we see sometimes zebra, all the beasts. Sometimes you have night time. The elephant is a person here. And you have hippos in the water? Yes, we have hippos in the water. Maybe you see hippos today. Maybe, yeah. Yeah. I'm not used to water at all. Yeah, you're not used to water. No, 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 no. Do you feel seasick or you're okay? Yeah. A little bit seasick. Yeah. A little bit. yeah. yeah. How are you feeling, Ella? Very nice and peaceful, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, wow. I've been our local canoe in the village we do it with very experienced fishermen. Okay, so we're out with some fishermen right now. Yes. Do they go fishing every day? Yes, every day they do fishing. They're fishing tilapia, as you see that. The way the river is coming to the lake, they're fishing catfish. They're quite big, aren't they? Yes. Sometimes the catfish can be a meter. Do you hear the hippo? Yeah. So is it close? Yes, we go very close. <laughs> Very dangerous on the coast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, your boat's got a name, Ella. It's called the One. Yours is just called MG22. Okay, yours is a more exciting name. We are the One. Yeah. They're cutting some trees middle of the forest, and then they come in with it, like a local boat. Is that yes. on the log? Yes, they're cutting some trees. That's an easy way to transport trees. Is there a concern that the water will go even further into the forest every year? We think maybe it will be decreased. Okay. Because we have no more enough rain. Yeah. Than it was. 
You see, the water is not too deep. No, it's not, is it? Someone is walking. It's quite shallow. Yes. Is it shallow the whole way? Yeah, the big way. Okay. <laughs> What's he saying? <laughs> He's the hippo giving birth somewhere. Oh yeah. <laughs> Here I'm, I'm afraid in the water. The water was in the second branch. The second branch. Yeah. The water was there. So it's gone down. It's going down. That's good. Why don't you why don't you sing the song Ella when you learn? <laughs> The climate change experienced here has far-reaching consequences. The large animals that used to call Lake Manyara National Park home have now fled the park as a result of the floods. The national park at present remains open, but visitor numbers have plummeted, which ultimately puts the future of the park in jeopardy. And many locals depend on tourists coming to the park for their income, from park rangers to hotel workers and even touts who sell their wares to visitors. The extreme weather also has an effect on crops, which we've seen are one of the main sources of livelihood in Toabu. Too much water floods farms and too little water encourages plants to wither and die. A few days ago we heard firsthand from a Maasai chief how the Maasai were having to travel further and further away from the area to find grass for their cattle to eat as this year's lack of rains has meant no new grass has grown. This is a sad reminder that climate change is very real and that we back home must do all we can to have a positive impact on the planet. I hope you're ready to film us, Ella, when we fall in, because our boat's wobbling a lot. Oz is very steady. I picked the right boat. <laughs> <laughs> That's Santi Sana. Yay! 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 We're home safe. <laughs> yeah, keep going. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 Sorry, yeah. Ah, it's good to be back on dry land. <laughs> <laughs> it's good fun. Yeah. <laughs> Santa Santa. Okay, so here you can see all the hippo track going to the water because they come out at night to graze. But this is a hippo print, look how big that is. That's like the foot and the toes. So it's like much bigger than my hand. Yeah. Crazy. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, I see it. Our day is coming to an end. We hop in our safari vehicle one last time and make our way to our accommodation for the night, nestled in the heart of Toowoomba. <laughs> Asante Sana. Oh yes. Santi. Yeah, see you at dinner. Today we have a buffet and for starter we have a soup. Is this one meat here? Yes. Ah, great. And that concludes our day in Towabu. Tomorrow we are going to embark on arguably our most exciting expedition to date. We'll be spending two days with the Hadzabi tribe, a group of nomadic hunter-gatherers who still follow a traditional lifestyle. This is not a video you'll want to miss. I'll link that video here when it's ready.